So as the cost of living continues to climb, Canadian seniors received a glimmer of hope today. The Canada Revenue Agency, CREA, has announced a substantial boost to old age security, OS, payments, promising an additional $900 annually for eligible recipients starting in 2024. So this unprecedented increase in monthly pension rates is set to provide much-needed financial relief to millions of older Canadians, many of whom have been struggling to make ends meet in the face of rising inflation and economic uncertainty. The announcement of this significant increase in OAS benefits has sent ripples through the Canadian senior community, sparking discussions about the potential impact on quality of life, financial stability, and the overall well-being of the nation's elderly population. As we delve into the details of this development, it becomes clear that the implications extend far beyond the simple dollar amount, touching on issues of social equity, economic policy, and the evolving needs of an aging society. At its core, the Old Age Security Program has been a cornerstone of Canada's social safety net for decades. Designed to provide a basic level of income to seniors, the OAS has played a crucial role in ensuring that older Canadians can maintain a decent standard of living in their retirement years. However, in recent times, there has been growing concern that the program has not kept pace with the rapidly changing economic landscape, leaving many seniors vulnerable to financial hardship. The decision to implement a $900 annual increase represents a significant shift in policy acknowledging the pressing need to address the financial challenges faced by older Canadians. SIP boost in benefits is not merely a numerical adjustment, it is a recognition of the changing realities of retirement in the 21st century. As life expectancy increases and the cost of essential goods and services continues to rise, the government's move to enhance OAS payments reflects a commitment to supporting seniors through these evolving circumstances. To fully appreciate the significance of this increase, it's essential to consider the context in which it occurs. Canada, like many developed nations, is grappling with an aging population. The demographic shift towards an older society has profound implications for various aspects of public policy, from healthcare to housing. The enhancement of OAS benefits is, in many ways, a response to these changing demographics and an acknowledgement of the growing political and economic influence of senior citizens. The $900 annual increase translates to a monthly boost of $75, a sum that may seem modest at first glance but can make a substantial difference in the lives of many seniors. For those living on fixed incomes, this additional amount can mean the difference between struggling to pay for necessities and having a small buffer for unexpected expenses. It can provide the means to afford healthier food options, cover the cost of essential medications, or simply allow for small indulgences that contribute to a better quality of life. Moreover, the increase in OAS benefits is likely to have a ripple effect on the broader economy. As seniors receive more income, their spending power increases, potentially stimulating local economies and supporting businesses and communities across the country. This injection of funds into the hands of consumers could lead to increased economic activity, particularly in sectors that cater to the needs and preferences of older adults. However, it's important to note that the impact of this increase will not be uniform across all OAS recipients. The Old Age Security Program is structured with various thresholds and clawback provisions that affect the amount of benefits received based on income levels. As such, the full $900 increase may not be realized by all seniors, particularly those with higher incomes. This aspect of the program highlights the ongoing challenge of balancing support for those in need with the fiscal realities of maintaining a sustainable pension system. The announcement of the OAS increase has also reignited discussions about the broader issue of retirement security in Canada. While the boost in benefits is undoubtedly welcome news for many seniors, it also serves as a reminder of the complex challenges facing retirees in an era of economic uncertainty. Questions about the long-term sustainability of public pension systems, the adequacy of retirement savings, and the role of government in supporting an aging population remain at the forefront of public discourse. So one of the key considerations in evaluating the impact of the OAS increases its relationship to inflation. The cost of living has been rising at a pace that has outstripped many fixed incomes, eroding the purchasing power of retirees. While the $900 annual boost is significant, there are concerns about whether it will be sufficient to keep pace with ongoing inflationary pressures. The government's commitment to indexing OS benefits to inflation is crucial in this regard, but the effectiveness of this measure in maintaining the real value of pensions over time remains a topic of debate. The timing of this announcement is also noteworthy, coming as it does in the wake of global economic challenges, including the ongoing recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has had a disproportionate impact on older adults, not only in terms of health risks, but also in economic terms. Many seniors have seen their retirement savings affected by market volatility, while others have faced increased costs related to healthcare and support services. In this context, the boost to OAS benefits can be seen as part of a broader strategy to support vulnerable populations through times of crisis and uncertainty.
It's worth examining the potential long-term implications of this policy decision. The increase in OAS benefits represents a significant commitment of public funds, and questions naturally arise about the sustainability of such measures. Critics may argue that enhancing pension benefits places an undue burden on younger generations of taxpayers, potentially exacerbating interdurational tensions. Proponents, on the other hand, might contend that investing in the well-being of seniors is a moral imperative and a sound economic strategy that benefits society as a whole. The debate surrounding the OAS increase also touches on broader questions of social policy and the role of government in providing for its citizens. Canada's public pension system, which includes both the OAS and the Canada Pension Plan, TAP, is often held up as a model of social security. However, the system faces ongoing challenges, including demographic pressures, changing labor market conditions, and evolving societal expectations. The decision to boost OAS benefits can be seen as part of an ongoing process of adapting these programs to meet the needs of a changing society. So one of the key aspects of the OAS program that deserves attention in light of this increase is its universality. Unlike some other pension programs, OAS available to all Canadian seniors who meet the residency requirements, regardless of their work history. So this universal approach has been both praised for its inclusivity and criticized for its cost. The decision to implement an across-the-board increase rather than a targeted boost for low-income seniors is likely to write night discussions about the most effective ways to allocate limited public resources. The impact of the OS increase on different segments of the senior population is another important consideration. While all eligible recipients will see some benefit, the relative impact will vary depending on individual circumstances. For seniors living in urban areas with high costs of living, the additional $900 per year may provide some relief, but may not significantly alter their financial situation. A contrast for those in rural or smaller communities where living costs are lower, the increase could have a more substantial impact on quality of life. It's also worth considering how this increase in OAS benefits interacts with other forms of retirement income and support. Many seniors rely on a combination of OAS, PEP private pensions, and personal savings to fund their retirement. The interplay between these various income sources can be complex, and changes to one element can have ripple effects on overall financial planning. Financial advisors and retirement planning experts are likely to be busy in the coming months, helping seniors understand how the OAS increase affects their overall financial picture. The announcement of the OAS increase also raises questions about the future direction of retirement policy in Canada. As the population continues to age and life expectancy increases, there is ongoing debate about the appropriate age for retirement and the structure of pension benefits. Some have advocated for further increases to the eligibility age for OAS, while others argue for more flexible approaches that allow for phased retirement. The decision to boost benefits rather than adjust eligibility criteria suggests a current policy preference for enhancing support within the existing framework. One of the challenges in implementing such a significant increase in benefits is ensuring that the information reaches all eligible recipients. The CRE and Service Canada will need to undertake comprehensive communication efforts to inform seniors about the changes and any steps they need to take to ensure they receive the full increase. This presents an opportunity to engage with the senior population and potentially address other issues related to access to government services and benefits. Technology aspect of delivering increased benefits is also worth considering. As government services increasingly move online, there is a need to ensure that seniors who may be less comfortable with digital platforms are not left behind. That implementation of the OAS increase could serve as a catalyst for improving digital literacy among older adults and enhancing the accessibility of online government services. The health implications of the OAS increase are another important factor to consider. Financial stress has been linked to various health issues, particularly among older adults. By providing additional income, the OAS boost may contribute to improved health outcomes for seniors, potentially reducing the burden on the healthcare system. This intersection of financial policy and public health underscores the interconnected nature of government programs and the importance of a holistic approach to senior well-being. Our environmental considerations also come into play when discussing policies that affect seniors. Society grapples with the challenges of climate change. There is growing awareness of the need to ensure that older adults are not disproportionately affected by environmental policies. The OAS increase could provide seniors with more resources to adapt to changing environmental conditions, whether through home improvements for energy efficiency or the ability to relocate to areas less affected by climate-related risks. The gender dimension of the OAS increase is another aspect that warrants attention. Women, on average, tend to have lower lifetime earnings and retirement savings than men due to factors such as career interruptions for caregiving and historical wage disparities. As a result, many women rely more heavily on OAS benefits in retirement. The across-the-board increase may have a particularly significant impact on older women, potentially contributing to greater financial security and independence. 
The OAS increase also has implications for intergenerational relationships within families. In many cases, adult children provide financial support to their aging parents. The boost in OAS benefits may alleviate some of this pressure, allowing for a rebalancing of family dynamics and potentially freeing up resources for middle-aged adults to focus on their own retirement planning or support for their children. Cultural considerations are also relevant when examining the impact of the OAS increase. Canada's senior population is diverse, reflecting the country's multicultural makeup. Different cultural traditions and expectations around aging, family support, and retirement can influence how the OAS boost is perceived and utilized. Policymakers and community organizations will need to be sensitive to these cultural nuances in their outreach and support efforts. The announcement of the OAS increase also provides an opportunity to reflect on the broader issue of ageism in society. By demonstrating a commitment to supporting older adults financially, the government sends a message about the value placed on seniors' contributions and well-being. This can contribute to challenging negative stereotypes about aging and promote a more inclusive view of older adults as active and valuable members of society. Education and financial literacy are crucial components in ensuring that seniors can make the most of the OAS increase. There is an opportunity for government agencies, financial institutions, and community organizations to provide resources and guidance on budgeting, investment, and long-term financial planning in light of the enhanced benefits. This educational effort could have lasting benefits beyond the immediate impact of the OAS boost. The role of technology in supporting seniors' financial management is another area of potential development. With the increase in benefits, there may be growing demand for user-friendly digital tools designed specifically for older adults to manage their finances, track expenses, and make informed decisions about their spending and saving. So this could spur innovation in the fintech sector focused on the needs of senior citizens. The OAS increase also has implications for the charitable and nonprofit sector. Many organizations provide support services to seniors, often filling gaps in government programs. The boost in OAS benefits may change the landscape of needs, potentially allowing these organizations to redirect resources to other areas of support or to focus on seniors with the greatest needs who may not fully benefit from the OAS increase. From a public policy perspective, the OAS increase raises questions about the balance between universal and targeted support measures. While the universal nature of OAS ensures broad coverage, some argue that resources could be more effectively allocated by focusing on low-income seniors. The decision to implement an across-the-board increase suggests a prioritization of simplicity and inclusivity over targeted interventions. The impact of the OAS increase on senior employment is another area of interest. Some seniors continue to work past the traditional retirement age, either out of financial necessity or personal choice. The boost in OAS benefits may influence decisions about work and retirement, potentially allowing some seniors to reduce their work hours or retire earlier. This, in turn, could have implications for the labor market and workplace dynamics. The OAS increase also intersects with issues of housing affordability, a pressing concern in many parts of Canada. For seniors living in areas with high housing costs, the additional income may provide some relief, potentially allowing them to remain in their homes or communities longer. However, it also highlights the ongoing challenge of ensuring adequate and affordable housing options for older adults across diverse geographic and economic contexts. The announcement of the OAS increase provides an opportunity to examine the broader ecosystem of support for seniors in Canada. While financial support is crucial, it is just one piece of the puzzle. Issues such as access to health shall social isolation, and age-friendly community design are all integral to ensuring a high quality of life for older adults. The international context of the OAS increase is also worth considering. How does Canada's approach to supporting seniors compare to that of other developed nations? The decision to enhance OAS benefits positions Canada as taking a proactive stance on addressing the financial needs of its aging population. This could influence policy discussions in other countries grappling with similar demographic challenges. The role of technology in delivering and managing increased OAS benefits is another area of potential development. As government services increasingly move online, there is an opportunity to leverage digital platforms to streamline benefit delivery, provide real-time information to recipients, and enhance overall efficiency. However, this digital transition must be balanced with the need to maintain accessible services for seniors who may not be comfortable with technology. The OAS increase also raises questions about the future of retirement planning and the changing nature of work. As traditional career patterns evolve and the gig economy grows, how will retirement support mechanisms need to adapt? The boost to OAS benefits could be seen as part of a broader conversation about reimagining retirement and social support in an era of changing work dynamics. The psychological impact of the OAS increase on seniors is another important consideration. Financial security is closely tied to mental well-being, particularly in later life. The knowledge of increased support may provide peace of mind to many seniors, potentially reducing stress and anxiety about making ends meet. This psychological benefit could have positive ripple effects on overall health and quality of life. 
the OAS increase also intersects with issues of elder abuse and financial exploitation. While increased benefits provide much-needed support, they may also make seniors targets for financial abuse. This underscores the importance of coupling financial support with education and protective measures to ensure that seniors can safely and fully benefit from the increased payments. The impact of the OAS increase on senior entrepreneurship is another intriguing area to explore. With additional financial security, some seniors may feel more confident in pursuing entrepreneurial ventures or small business opportunities. This could lead to increased economic activity and innovation driven by older adults challenging stereotypes about aging and productivity. The OAS boost also has implications for intergenerational equity and social cohesion. While providing additional support to seniors is broadly viewed as a positive step, it's important to consider how this fits into the broader picture of social spending and support for different age groups. Balancing the needs of seniors with those of younger generations remains an ongoing challenge for policymakers. The announcement of the OAS increase provides an opportunity to reflect on the evolving nature of retirement itself. So as life expectancy increases and health outcomes improve, many seniors are redefining what it means to be retired. The additional income from OAS may support a more active and engaged retirement lifestyle, potentially shifting societal perceptions of aging and later life. The role of community organizations and local governments in supporting seniors is another important aspect to consider in light of the OAS increase. While the federal boost provides a foundation of support, local initiatives and programs play a crucial role in addressing the specific needs of seniors and senior communities across Canada. The OAS increase may create opportunities for enhanced collaboration between different levels of government and community organizations to provide comprehensive support for older adults. The impact of the OAS increase on senior volunteerism and civic engagement is also worth exploring. Many retirees contribute significant time and energy to volunteer activities, benefiting their communities in numerous ways. The additional financial security provided by the OAS boost may enable more seniors to engage in volunteer work, potentially strengthening the social fabric of communities across the country. The intersection of the OAS increase with issues of digital inclusion is another important consideration. As more services and information move online, ensuring that seniors have access to and can navigate digital platforms becomes increasingly crucial. The implementation of the OAS increase could serve as a catalyst for initiatives aimed at improving digital literacy and access among older adults. The OAS boost also raises questions about the future of retirement savings and personal financial planning. While the increase provides welcome support, it also underscores the importance of individual retirement planning to complement government benefits. This could spark renewed interest in financial education and retirement planning services tailored to the needs of older adults. The impact of the OAS increase on senior travel and tourism is another interesting angle to consider. With additional disposable income, some seniors may be more inclined to travel, whether domestically or internationally. This could have positive implications for the tourism industry, particularly in regions that cater to older travelers. The OAS boost also intersects with issues of age-friendly urban planning and community design. As seniors receive increased financial support, there may be growing demand for communities that cater to the needs and preferences of older adults. This could influence urban development patterns and spark innovation in housing and community services designed for an aging population.